Mr. Swansea, thank goodness. I was beginning to be concerned. Worry no more, Nurse Crane, for I bring good news. Oh, Doctor, what a night. We lost two more patients. Mm. Nurse Scow said she couldn't take it anymore and resigned. Yes, well, I'll make a new rotor in the morning. In the meantime, find a... Oh, good bed for Mr. Hampton. Be sure to pay attention to his needs. Of course, Doctor. Oh, and Dorothy? Yes, Doctor? Dr. Reed here has just returned from the front. He served King Country and will be joining us here at Pembroke. We're very lucky to have gained a surgeon of his talent, and one so experienced in blood transfusions. That is good news indeed, Doctor. <laughs> oh, yes. <sighs> Here at Pembroke, it's not what we have, but what we haven't. It's only thanks to Nurse Crane and the staff that our ship doesn't sink. If you have any questions, just ask her. Duly noted. Thank you. Your assistance is required, Dr. Swansea, immediately. Welcome aboard, Jonathan. We'll catch up after my rounds. Coming, Nurse Crane. I'm coming. Okay. Come on, take me to the hospital. I might as well push his butt in the hospital. Time to take me to the hospital. If I accept the doctor Swansea's help, I will work at the Pembroke Hospital. I have no choice. The man knows about my condition and about what I've become. A vampire. I can't believe this. I don't know anything about this. Secluded medical facility. Everybody here will take me for what I'm not anymore. Jonathan E. Reed, the famous surgeon. I must lie to them all, to the patients, to the staff. This is my new home. Where I will hide from all who are after me. Where I will hide from everyone until I get a better understanding of what is going on. If succeeded. Wonder how it is for a failure. Less locked. What's back there? It's locked, all right. It's okay, Jonathan. I'll see you later. Okay. Come on, you bastard. You can do better than that. The fuck? Nah. It's my turn. I won't bite. Sir, please. You've lost too much blood. Calm yourself. You think I didn't notice? Stop your staring and get me to an hospital, you ass. <laughs> Insulting a good Samaritan. Not exactly the way to get rescued. Mm -hmm. All right, all right, sorry. I am in pain. The guts are spilling out onto the street and you're yabbering on. Yes. You look fine to me. That's a very nasty wound you've got there. Take my word, I was... I am a doctor, Dr. Jonathan Reed. <sighs> Name's Clay Cox. I'd appreciate you helping me to a better place, Doc. Follow me, Mr. Cox. Let me assist you to that better place. Blood quality indicates how much XP you will obtain from a particular citizen. The higher the blood quality, the more XP you get. I'll be the good guy. <laughs> mesmerize. To drink the blood of your prey, you first need to mesmerize them to lead them out of sight from others. Your memorized level must be equal or higher than the citizen's resistance. Do I have to? Is this what I have to do?
dance with him the dance of life and death. Presentation. Press X to embrace Clay Cox or to release him. Embracing Clay will provide a massive XP boost, but be aware that there will be consequences. But any more about decisions of letting their chance to increase the experience you gained. No more. Not tonight. Not like this. Merciful release. I will not take another life. Unless he really deserves it. Right now, I don't know. I don't know what that happened. What? What happened? Whoa, I feel giddy. Did I black out? I'm sure to saw that. <laughs> It is wise for the huntsman to sometimes let his prey go, but no famished hunter can run for long. Wait, what? Ooh. I do. <laughs> Time to play hide and seek with new staff members, no matter how illustrious they may be. Mm. I found a wounded man by the docks. He answers to the name of Clay Cox. He requires urgent medical attention. Already making the rounds? That's the Pembroke spirit. I'll ask our porter, Milton, to bring him back immediately. Thank you, nurse. What can I do for you? Dr. Swansea insisted we provide you a quiet office. You'll find it on the second floor with your name on the door. Thank you. Nurse Crane, isn't it? Yes, Dorothy Crane. Welcome to Pembroke Hospital, Dr. Reed. Your office has been prepared. Nice. I would like to ask a few questions first. And Mr. Hampton, the patient we brought in. How does he fare? I gave him a sedative to help him sleep. Poor thing was in quite a state of shock. What kind of man is Dr. Swansea? Well, you accepted the job from him. I thought you would have known about your employer. <laughs> it's right to assume Dr. Swansea knows far more about me than I do about him. You'll get to know him soon enough and better than me. The Administrator has better things to do than mix with us. Apologies, I've only just met him the once. This is sudden. I've only just returned to England. Dr. Swansea is a brilliant surgeon and the most compassionate physician. If you could point me in the direction of my room again, nurse. Second floor of the hospital, left after the stairs. It's the last vacant office at the end of the corridor. I don't know if I guess I'll, I don't Thank you, Nurse Crane. <laughs> 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 
Due to the influenza, this hospital can no longer take any patients. Hospital full. Please go back home. Uh huh. Good evening, nurse. I'm Dr. Jonathan Reed, the new surgeon here at the Pembroke. Dr. Swansea has already told us about you, sir. I'm Nurse Gwyneth Brannigan. Welcome to the Pembroke Hospital. Did he really? It's a good thing I wasn't hoping to keep a low profile. All members of staff have already read about your new blood transfusion technique. Dr. Swansea made sure of that. I see. Well, I'm a little surprised. But I suppose I'll just have to deal with this unexpected notoriety. You must know, blood transfusions are Dr. Swansea's primary subject of research. He is convinced it is the future. How are things here? Not good, to say the least. We're struggling against an invisible enemy, oh, more my. lethal than any bullet from a gun. It's hard, Dr. An invisible enemy. Quite a poetic term for a disease, especially from a nurse. Sorry, Doctor. These last few weeks have been exhausting. We could all do with a good night's sleep. Do you think this hospital can survive the epidemic? We are all volunteers here, and we're trying to hold fast, but... How do we beat an invisible killer? Some nurses have already resigned. I'm not familiar with all the staff yet. Perhaps you could help me. Brilliant professionals, most of them. Dr. Swansea has a gift for recruiting talent. Most of them? Is there a problem I should know about, nurse? It would be inappropriate for me to speak ill of a colleague. Is there anyone that stands out? Well, I have never met someone as dedicated as Dr. Tippett's. He should be a standard for us all here. If only he were younger. Why should his age be a problem? I guess it's fair to say he's always pushing himself to the limits. He just doesn't know when to stop and get some rest. Hmm. Uh, I don't want to be rude. <sighs> Goodbye, nurse. Call me if you need assistance. Last summer's epidemic was difficult. Good evening, sir. I'm Dr. Jonathan Reed. I'm new here. I've already heard about you, Dr. Reed. I'm Milton Hooks, the ambulance driver for this shithole of a hospital. That's quite a blunt introduction, Mr. Hooks. Yep. You can call me Milton. I like to speak my mind, Dr. Reed. Perk of the job. Don't judge me, and I won't judge you. I'm not sure I understand what you're talking about. Well, I'm no doctor, but I'm pretty sure a gun can't be used as a surgical instrument. You have a keen eye. I learned to shoot during the war, and have carried one ever since. Old habits die hard. No need to explain, Dr. Reed. And if you ever need a better gun, remember, I may have something for you. Cool. How is the situation around here? You want to hear the situation is all right? It's fucking awful. We lack everything, and it's getting worse every day. So what do you do exactly in this hospital? Apart from smuggling guns, I mean. I've been an ambulance driver since... too long, I guess. I bring sick people here night and day. It's a dirty job, but I get it done. Most of the time. Since you're on the front line, how is the sanitary situation in this vicinity? It's a complete disaster. It's even getting dangerous to enter some streets or buildings. Even the locals attack you. Mm. It sounds like things have been a bit rough recently. What's happened? Yesterday I got attacked by the patient I was bringing in. Mm. I escaped through the hospital's garden. But I lost my wallet when I was running. You left an infected patient outside the hospital. That's incredibly dangerous. Go there yourself if you want, but be careful, Doctor. I'd rather not bring your dead body back. Are you really smuggling weapons through the hospital? And why not? I've already been attacked by patients, you know. 
and by gang members willing to steal my money. But you're not defending yourself. You're selling guns to civilians. You keep people alive your own way, Doctor. I offer them another way to protect their health. I'd like to see your goods. Wise choice, Dr. Reed. A reliable gun is what everybody needs these days. Molten shotgun. Feel like getting it for parts would be better. I'm gonna have a lot of people to talk to, don't I? I was too busy doing something else, I don't know what that happened. When I watched the Pembroke's ambulance driver confessed the patient he was bringing to the hospital attacked him. He had to escape through the facility's garden but lost his wallet. While doing so, the attacker must have been quite violent. Well, turn refuses to return there anymore. Maybe I should search the garden and see for himself. What is really going on there? How do I get back there? I have two people to talk to. This is gonna take forever. So it is true. The famous Dr. Reed has joined us. I can't think of any better news during these terrible times. Do we know each other? Actually, yes. We met once before at the Rockefeller University in New York. Dr. Tippett, yes, I remember. I was assisting Professor Carell in his research about coronary bypasses. He had nothing but praise for you. He was also very confident about your future. And look at you now. Eminent surgeon and blood transfusion specialist. What is the Pembroke Hospital situation? And please, speak freely. This hospital is not exactly the best of London. I'm sure you are used to working in a better environment.
It's more than enough. In any case, the personnel of a hospital are much more important to me than the building. Don't be misled by appearances, Dr. Reed. This hospital does not lack talented people. It just lacks hope. What can you tell me about the staff in the hospital? Some are really good, and others are not so good. But during this troubled period, there is no time for slander. I prefer to focus on the positive character traits. Tell me more about cherished people, then. Nurse Brannigan is a pearl. She is the most helpful and dedicated nurse I've ever worked with. A clever and cheerful woman. You really seem to admire her skills. Core Koran is convinced that Gwyneth Bergen is overqualified as a nurse. Koran is exhausting himself and refuses to stop working. Oh boy. Mm. Healthy. I'll go even further. If she was a man, she would be a damn fine practitioner. Any opinion about the management? I don't always agree with Dr. Swansea's reserve, but I must admit he does all he can to keep this facility running during this crisis. Ah yes, the burden of command. I was fed up with this concept while serving as a medical officer. Don't get me wrong, Swansea's a good administrator. I just wish he would get out of his office down again. Tell me more about cherished people. Nurse Brannigan is a pearl. She is the most helpful uh, and dedicated I thought, I thought nurse I've ever up. worked with. A clever and cheerful woman. You really seem to admire her skills. I'll go even further. If she was a man, she would be a damn fine practitioner. You're exhausting yourself, Corcoran. Maybe you should think about preserving your strength. No, we must keep on healing all those poor souls. We are the last rampart before chaos. Once more, unto the breach. Hmm. Do you need any medical assistance yourself, Doctor? Come on, don't be ridiculous, dear colleague. You're exhausting yourself, Corcoran. Maybe you should think about preserving your strength. No. We must keep on healing all those poor souls. We are the last rampart before chaos. Once more, unto the breach. Nurse Brannigan is worried about you, Doctor. <laughs> she should not have told you that. Oh. You don't have to blame her for her honesty. <laughs> I'm not that kind of man, my dear Jonathan. Actually, Nurse Brannigan's opinion is the only one I may listen to. Huh. <sighs> Goodbye, Dr. Tippett. Swansea is right. This place seems perfect to conduct my research. Do not cough in public. My disease covers spitting, sneezing, coughing. Okay, that's the same. Okay, 
I've got a lot of stuff to do. <laughs> Hello. Good evening, miss. I'm Dr. Reed, the new surgeon at the Pembroke Hospital. And who are you? Your name has no meaning to me, mortal. Okay. <laughs> You're nothing but dust blown by the winds of eternity. I beg your pardon. What are you begging for, mortal? My clemency? Well, tonight maybe I'm inclined to mercy. You'll never forget the night you met Thelma Howcroft. You keep calling me mortal. Why is that? And if I'm mortal, what are you? Well, Dr. Reed, if you must know, I'm a vampire. Hmm. And why do you believe you're a vampire? I don't need to believe anything. It is what I am. It is what I feel within this hollow shell of flesh. Please, describe to me how you feel. What is it like to be a vampire? I can hear my body crumble from the inside as my flesh cracks and fades. I sense the last pulse of postulant blood within my drying veins. I need new blood. <laughs> I see. Have you ever heard of Cotard Syndrome, Miss Howcroft? Never. It's a mental illness discovered by a French neurologist named Jules Cotard. The affected patients are delusional. They believe that they are putrefying, that they are dead, a, a ghost or a ghoul, or in your case, a vampire. Delusional, you say? Oh, sad. Thelma is affected by the Cotard Syndrome and believes she is a vampire. It's immortal. You can't even begin to understand the concept of immortality. And you think it is I who am delusional. I'm assuming you must be a patient here. Am I right, Miss Howard? It's only a cover to hide from my enemies. I can leave whenever I want. As a woman, a, a spirit, fog, or bat. <laughs> who are these enemies you mentioned? Can you describe them? I cannot say for sure. But I sense their eyes on me from nearby. I, I, I feel them watching me every time I visit the garden near the morgue. The staff here are not your enemy. They're here to help you, to care for you. I'm not speaking of the doctors in white. I'm speaking of the men and women who hunt me. For I am a vampire. I see. Don't worry. These people will not find you here. I'll personally make sure they leave you alone. Thank you, mortal. But do not interfere with them, for you are no match for those that hunt me. Mm. <laughs> sure. <laughs> oh, boy. Who are you really, Miss Howcroft? I mean, apart from being a vampire. Is that not enough for you, puny mortal? What do you require? Hmm? Proof of my powers? Well, I'm curious nice. to know who you were before becoming a vampire. No, it was such a long time ago, I don't remember. Centuries of unholy life can have strange effects on one's minds, you see? Mm. Centuries, you say. <laughs> oh, boy. I'll leave you, Mistress of the Dark, to your nocturnal activities. <laughs> Oh, again. Uh oh. What's up, buddy? Good evening, sir. Can I help you? Unless you're here to fix my face. No. I don't think you can help me. Oh, I'm Dr. Uh, Reed. He I've recently taken the position of head surgeon here. War injuries, am I right? You guessed right, Doctor. German shell took my pretty little mug right off. Oof. But they still call me Thomas Elwood. How is your stay with us, Mr. Elwood? Oh, it's bliss. I just escaped death in the trenches to be surrounded again by the moans of the dying. Can I ask you precisely why you're a patient here? It's the pain, sir. The drugs don't work. It just hurts under the scars, if you get my drift. Can I do anything for your pain? Nurses gave me a bunch of pills. No effect. Told you. It's like the flames are under my skin, burning away. 
Who is treating you? Is someone in particular looking after your case? Nobody since the old and tired doctor spoke to me. Started to think I was forgotten about. Wouldn't blame you. You don't seem worried by that. My face hurts so much more when I smile or cry. I've learned it's easier not to speak. But be assured I'm smiling inside. Hmm. How is your stay with us, Mr. Elwood? Oh, it's bliss. I just escaped death in the trenches to be surrounded again by the moans of the dying. Can I ask you precisely why you're a patient here? It's the pain, sir. Yeah, I did the drugs no, don't work. It just hurts under the scars. If you get my drift. Where were you stationed, sir? Did you serve for long? I really don't want to talk about all this shit. No offense. I was pushing too much. I served in France myself. I just wanted to know what happened to you. You were an officer, weren't you? Then I doubt we fought the same war, sir. No offense. Hmm. How close are you to Miss Hawcroft? Are you aware that she thinks she is a vampire? To wait for her next nibble is the best reason to stay here. Every time she approaches my bed, she treats me like something tasty. <laughs> A normal person. Aren't you afraid? She may hurt you if the game goes too far. She's quite harmless, I can assure you. Her head's broken inside, is all. Mm. While I'm busted on the outside. But she's still beautiful. Living proof that there's hope for me. Thomas sees Thelma Hawcroft as living proof that there is hope for him. Nice. So do you let her bite you? You know that's not sanitary. And why not? She's only supping a few drops of me blood. And the pain. It's real for once. She could decide to bite less willing patients. Then it's another good reason for me to stay here, Doctor. Mm. This feels rude. <sighs> you do realize she's mentally disturbed. It's called the Cotar Syndrome. She truly believes she's a vampire. In her madness, she never refers to my scars. And frankly, if I could, I'd join her world. It seems much more fun than the real one. Mm. Goodbye for now, Mr. Elm. Good evening, Mr. Hampton. How do you feel? Dr. Reed, is it? Oh, sir, I must apologize for my behavior. What do you mean? I was not myself in the factory. Fear and exhaustion made me say awful things to you, I'm afraid. You remained perfectly nice and polite. A little delirious, perhaps. But who wouldn't be after enduring an abduction? Thank you, Doctor. That's a relief. Now all I need to do is rest and return to my flock. How did you end up in William Bishop's den? I had received alarming news about his recent behavior. I went to his place, and he refused to let me go. Why did he abduct you? William was an alcoholic. His addiction suddenly changed to blood. I don't know why. Just like a patient I met here. This Miss Hawcroft. <laughs> you dared to enter this awful place alone. You're a hero, Mr. Hampton. Or a fool. I'm just a man trying to help his friends, Dr. Reed. William Bishop was a conflicted soul, searching for light. Do you know Tom Watts, the bartender from the Turtle? 
I met him before I found you in the canning factory. Tom? Yes, of course. Always the helping hand, good old Tom. Without men like him, corruption and despair would have wiped out the East End long ago. Hmm. People are still in despair. How could it be otherwise? The authorities have left us all to rot in this contagious nightmare. No drugs, no advice, nothing. It's a damn shame. Who should I avoid in this part of town, then? Any particularly evil figures? Not really. Most men and women are just doing their best. And it's not my habit to speak ill of people I know, Doctor. What is the general situation in the East End docks? The situation has always been tough, with a lot of tensions between the gangs and the Dockers' trade union. The wet boot boys are very nervous since they lost their leader. Who leads the gang now? Since Clay Cox went missing, it's his wife and Nina who runs the show. What? With the assistance of her minion, Booth Digby. <laughs> what? Has the gang been threatening you? Ah, no. I've had this nickname for so long, you know, the sad saint of the East End. No one dares to bug a saint, not even criminals. Okay, I don't, I don't know about that. Huh. What do you do for a living, Mr. Hampton? I can't help but notice the cross around your neck. I manage a night asylum for the poor and homeless of the docks, and I try to guide the lost and hesitant on the right path to our Lord. Are you a priest, Mr. Hampton? A deacon, maybe? Not at all, Doctor. I'm just a man of faith willing to preach the good word. Mm. Why didn't you use your cross against William Bishop? To repel him somehow? That's a very strange question, Doctor. A cross is no magical token, mm. if that's what you were trying to say. Not mine, anyway. How do you feel, Mr. Hampton? Medically speaking, I mean. I feel exhausted. Beyond exhaustion, actually. William drank so much of my blood in his madness. I feel... empty. Any... You're in good hands here. Dr. Swansea is well versed in blood transfusion, and I'm sure he'll take the best care of you. Thank you, sir. I believe all I need is rest, and then I can go back to the people who need me. Have you made friends since you arrived? Not really. But I recognize Miss Harriet Jones. I knew her when she lived by the docks. That poor woman had such a miserable life. You never came to see her here at Pembroke. Receiving visits when sick can be an important part of the healing process, you know. We're not just bodies. You're preaching to the converted now, Doctor. To be truly honest, I thought she was dead. She left the docks many months ago. Hmm. Goodbye, Mr. Hampton. We'll talk again later. Hmm. You can't try both. Oh, I can. Okay. I don't know how I feel about you right now. Hmm. I cannot enter. To look at the map. This one's over there, that one's over here. Right. Good evening, nurse. Good evening, doctor. I don't think we've been introduced yet. My name is Pippa Hawkins. And I'm Dr. Jonathan Reed. Dr. Swansea has recently offered me a position in this hospital. Well, it's a euphemism that your help will be appreciated, Doctor. Don't worry. 
How would you describe the situation at the Pembroke Hospital? It's serious. The flu is wreaking havoc amongst the staff and patients. We are running out of everything. Nurse Hawkins, the Spanish flu won't last forever. Even the Black Plague didn't kill everyone. I wish I could believe you. But what if this epidemic was worse? What if in the end, nobody was spared? How long have you been a nurse? Well, long enough to see that the epidemic is winning. And no matter how qualified you are, don't tell me you'll change that. Wait, what happened? <sighs> Dang, why did I have to sneeze? <laughs> What'd you say? <laughs> uh. You're right. When dealing with such a terrible disease, one must remain humble. But that doesn't mean we shouldn't try our best. <sighs> Sorry, Doctor. I don't want to sound bitter. But I'm just too tired to give a pep talk like Nurse Brannigan. How is the Pembroke staff coping with the epidemic? Well, not well. Milton, the ambulance driver, is even more grumpy than usual, especially concerning doctors. Why is Milton grumpy on a daily basis? Is it just an act? Milton's not the kind of man who's bothered about a bad reputation, whether he deserved it or not. Milton was positioned mediocre among his colleagues. Mediocre. Mediocre. Why does Milton dislike doctors? Well, I don't know. Just ask him. But be warned. Milton is not the chatty type. How would you describe the situation at the Pembroke Hospital? It's serious. The flu is wreaking havoc amongst the staff and patients. We are running out of everything. Oh, right, that one. I don't want to do that one. I feel like I'm being rude if I say that. Goodbye, Nurse Hawkins. It's like if I have to, I'll say it, but I feel like I'm going to be a dick if I say it. The nurses are needed now. In the name of mercy, they depend on you. Nurses are needed now. Inquire at the nearest appointments office at the Ministry of Labor and National Service. Right to 15 Kingways, London. Good evening, Nurse Hawkins. Good Oops. evening, Dr. Reid. Goodbye, Nurse Hawkins. This is huge. Good evening, Doctor. I believe we're going to be working together. Dr. Reed. Dr. Swansea informed us of your arrival, but I could not dare to believe we'd have such good fortune. Such an honor, sir. <laughs> Thank you. And you are... I am Thoreau Strickland, Dr. Thoreau Strickland. I'm a great admirer of your work, Dr. Reed. Please, could you tell me something about yourself? I'm a great admirer of your work concerning blood transfusion, Dr. Reed. I run my own experiments. I'm convinced it's the future. What made you choose to be a doctor? I'm not ashamed to admit you and your work have inspired me. I am honored to have the opportunity to work by your side. <laughs> thickish, thickish. It's always a pleasure to share scientific and medical knowledge with someone eager to learn. I'll be glad to help you if I can. This epidemic may be the century's most terrible disaster, but I'm convinced that we, as doctors, are the only ones able to defeat it. I based my technique on my mentor's research. He helped me perfect my method. What is yours? I'd rather not talk about it. For now, it's just theories and first approach. My process is purely experimental and unsuccessful. As long as you're cautious and methodical. Thorough experiments and blood transition have not been successful yet. Cool. 
You may remain empty-handed, but you won't fail. You're not the first one to warn me. But I am convinced knowledge is the main weapon against the ravages of this epidemic. What can you tell me about the Pembroke? Well, it has always been an honor to work with Dr. Swansea. But with your arrival, I can't think of a better opportunity to learn about blood transfusion. You seem quite optimistic. It's a rare and precious attitude in these difficult times. I'm convinced that this epidemic is a test. A test of endurance and dedication for us men of science. Questions remain about our capacity to resolve the situation. True, true. Last summer, during the first wave of the epidemic, I used to joke with Milton about the extra work. We're not smiling now. Do you need help with anything in particular? Well, yes, maybe. I'm waiting for a batch of products I ordered for my personal research, yet my supplier seems to have vanished. Do you want me to play the errand boy for you? Oh no, Dr. Reed. But if you went personally to his shop, what with your reputation and all, he wouldn't dare to refuse the products I need. I see. Well, give me the address, for I may pass by if I have time. Hmm. Tell me more about your willingness to experiment with new medical techniques. Harvey Fiddick is a patient suffering from a severe injury that could cripple him if not treated correctly. I'm convinced your blood transfusion technique could help him. What is it you really want? To save him? Or to prove your point? Fair question. I want nothing but to save my patient, Dr. Reed. Especially since I know Mr. Fiddick's story. Hmm. Tell me Mr. Fiddick's story. Our first diagnosis was compromised because Mr. Fiddick lied to us about the real origin of his injury. He first claimed it was an accident. But why would he hide such crucial information from us? Because he is a proud father. Ashamed of putting his children at risk because of his own negligence. Harvey is blaming himself for his injury. I don't know what to think about you. Why does this feel tickish? I don't know why, but that feels tickish, so I'm not gonna choose that. Goodbye, Dr. Strickland. Is that? I'm so confused. I will not let you down, my boy. Okay, I think that's where I'm supposed to go in. Huh, I got to go back outside. Good evening, sir. I'm Dr. Reed. May I help you? I don't know if a third opinion is needed. Your colleagues are already arguing about my condition. I see. Would you mind telling me more about your situation? I'm Harvey Fiddick. All I want is to get me bloody arm fixed properly. Tell me about yourself, Mr. Fiddick. I'm just a regular guy waiting to get his arm fixed. So I can return to work and to my family. I was more curious about what you were doing before being hospitalized. I'm a carpenter. And a good one, too. But that means I need both arms to feed my family, Dr. Reed. Are you satisfied with your treatment here? Well, it's clear that I've chosen a bad time to be injured. Forgive my bluntness, but you seem overwhelmed by cases of the flu. I won't lie to you about it. I'm afraid we are. Are you sure you don't want to operate yourself, Dr. Reed? I have the feeling you're very capable. And your colleagues seem to think so too. In other circumstances, you would be right. But for now, I don't think I can take on the responsibility. 
My apologies. Hmm. Tell me about the doctors who are arguing about your case. Strickland and Aykroyd. They both want the best for me, but there's a lot of pride there. Doctors are no different from carpenters, it seems. What do you mean? I often had professional arguments with rivals on a building site. Difference is, I disagreed about wooden nails, not flesh and bones. Uh, tell me about your injury, Harvey. Why do you feel so guilty about it? My wife died because of me. Uh, and now I may lose everything because I've been careless enough to hurt myself. What an arsehole. Uh, Harvey's wife died during the war. <laughs> How could your job be responsible for your wife's death? I was working a double. She went out to bring me a hot meal and got caught in a German bomb raid. Uh. You can't hold yourself responsible for your injury, Mr. Fiddick, unless you tried to hurt yourself. Of course I didn't hurt myself, but I can't work until my arm is fixed. My children need to eat, Doctor. Where are you, kids? Tell me more about the death of your wife, Harvey. 1915. I was in the army. Building workshops for the Royal Flying Corps. Helen was happy I wasn't sent to the front. What happened? The Germans sent Zeppelins to bomb the construction site, but they missed their uh... target. My wife was bringing my dinner when the bombs fell. How are your children after losing their mother? They were smaller then. The only good thing about this is my Ellen didn't bring them with her that night. I'm sorry for your loss. So many died during the bombings. I served in France and witnessed the carnage there. I would like to say that she didn't suffer. Truth is, I have no idea. I just know that I'm all that me kids have. Poor little bleeders. Goodbye for now, Mr. Fiddick. I'll see you later. You always knew the words to calm the children, Helen. As for me. Okay, first we need to go outside for that. How far are we gonna go out? Still there. Confused about them. Miss Hawkins is outside. Be sure I'll not find your unconscious body in the house again. I promise you, you'll not find my unconscious body. For huh. God's sake, how can you say such a thing? How can you refuse to listen? I tried to warn you for so long. No, I won't let my only son die. You promised me you'll stay alive. Your son lied to you, like the whole world lies to us. Mortimer intends to take his own life. Uh. <sighs> Boy. I think I want to talk to him again and take his wallet. See if I can go inside that room now. Good evening, sir. I'm Dr. Reed. 
I believe we're going to be colleagues. Reed, yes, I've been informed about your arrival. I'm Waverly Aykroyd. Welcome aboard, I suppose. Does my arrival inconvenience you in some way, Dr. Aykroyd? Let us just say that I don't particularly share Dr. Swansea's enthusiasm for hiring you. What we need here are reliable professionals, not overrated dabblers. Oh. And all right. If you have a problem with me, Dr. Aykroyd, please feel free to tell me. Dr. Swansea has imposed your presence on this hospital without asking anyone's advice the benefit of his position, but I don't agree with it. I know we've never met before, but I believe this hospital could use all the help it can get. You will agree with that, I'm sure. Oh, but I have heard about you, Dr. Reed. Of course, you can't say the same about me, since I have not wasted my time courting the press. I know, right? Mm. There is no need for such animosity between us. Don't you think the epidemic is already enough to deal with? That is one point we could agree on. And that is precisely why I want to be sure that you will be of help to this hospital instead of a burden. Since your tenure in this hospital is longer than mine, perhaps you can tell me more about this place. Let's just say I'm tired of the carelessness around me. I have always respected the skills of Dr. Swansea, but over time, his enthusiasm has become displaced. Carelessness? Exactly what are you talking about? We're here to save lives. The people who trust us are not volunteering for experimentation. They're here to be healed. I don't intend to run any radical experiments, Doctor. Even if I, as any good practitioner should, express an interest in pushing the boundaries of medical research. Modern medical methods were created through audacity and ego. But there are rules in our line of work, and they're here to protect our patients. Waverly disapproves modern medicine methods. Ah. Okay. Okay. Tell me, Waverly, what do you think of Dr. Strickland's enthusiasm for his experimental research? Strickland is playing with his patients' lives for pride and glory. Now that, sir, is unethical. Are you thinking about something in particular? Harvey Fiddick needs delicate surgery. I believe we should stick to the usual procedure. Uh... But my young colleague obviously disagrees. Why do you wish to lead this surgery? I strongly believe that Mr. Fiddick should not be butchered to test an unproven procedure. No, if I was a real doctor, then I probably wouldn't know, but I have no clue. Other people may say that's too conservative a point of view. Conservative? And what are you going to say to Mr. Fiddick if he loses his arm because of the operation? Because that's what's going to happen if the surgery is a failure. And are you not afraid that your rivalry with Strickland may be blinding you? Rivalry? I guess you could call it that. But I will never be childish enough to let my personal feelings affect my judgment. If you have a problem with me, Dr. Aykroyd, please feel free to tell me. Dr. Swansea has imposed your presence on this hospital without asking anyone's advice. The benefit of his position. But I don't agree with it. I know we've never met before. But I believe this hospital could use all the help it can get. You will agree with that, I'm sure. Oh, but I have heard about you, Dr. Reed. Of course, you can't say the same about me. 
since I have not wasted my time courting the press. There is no need for such animosity between us. Don't you think the epidemic is already enough to deal with? That is one point we could agree on. And that is precisely why I want to be sure that you will be of help to this hospital instead of a burden. It seems you have bad memories of your military service. I refuse to see this industrial slaughter as scientific progress. War only reveals the worst in men. We can at least agree on something, Dr. Ackroyd. I don't know what you've heard about me, but I have already proved my value as a practitioner. I don't question your skills, okay. Dr. Reed, but your motive. Is it money? Fame? Uh... Or are you truly dedicated? And what exactly is that supposed to mean? I served in the war just like you. But unlike you, I did not use the wounded to play the modern sorcerer. Be careful what you insinuate, Dr. Ackroyd. I only want you to admit you used those men to improve your theories. This is ridiculous. My blood transfusion technique saved many lives, and you know it. You see? That is exactly what I hate about people like you. You avoid this kind of accusation instead of facing reality. Mm. Thank you for your time. We'll talk later. Can I go in the room now? So I had to f see that scene before you go in it. Doctor. Good evening. I'm Dr. Reed. Can I help at all? No. Really? Why are you here then? I don't want to talk. My throat hurts too much. I suppose that this pain is the reason you're here. Is someone taking care of you? Yes. And no. Could you at least tell me your name, sir? Mortimer. Mortimer Goswick. How painful is your throat, Mr. Goswick? So painful I'd rather not talk at all, Doctor. Mm. Yeah. I'll let you get some rest then. I'm alright. Don't waste your time with me. I'll give him a couple of minutes. Good evening, madam. Can I help you? It's my son who needs you, sir. I'm Dr. Jonathan Reed. How can I help your son? I'm Beatrice Goswick, mother of Mortimer Goswick. Could you check on him, please, Dr. Reed? I've heard much of your talents as a physician. What can you tell me about yourself, Mrs. Goswick? Not much to say. Just take care of my Mortimer and I'll cover all the expenses. That's all that matters. May I ask if you have an occupation, Mrs. Goswick? I'm a teacher by profession. Hmm. I teach young women who are more ambitious about their futures than their families. Cool. Are you really that rich? Most of the patients here are of a more humble origin, if I may say so. Yes. Thanks to my husband. May he rest in peace. I can cover any needed medical expenses. Hmm. What do you think of your reception here? Any complaints? I have had the uttermost reservations about this hospital since we arrived. But we had no other choice, considering the state of emergency. Is there something in particular that's bothered? Beatrice questions the Pembroke Hospital's efficiency. Great. Some of the staff were not especially welcoming. I suspect they're not accustomed to dealing with patients of such social standing. Tell me more about your arrival at the Pembroke Hospital. What gave you such a bad first impression? The ambulance driver was quite rude, mm. for a start. And that nurse, Miss Hawkins, seems to have quite a dubious attitude. What do you really? mean? She managed to secure a bed for my son despite the epidemic. It was a relief, but it wasn't cheap. Ooh. 
Pippa saves best for patients who can pay. Aha. Uh -huh. She charged you for a bed? Yes, and I paid without question, considering the urgency of the situation. I share your concern, Mrs. Goswick. Be sure that I'll talk to the people involved. I don't expect compensation, Dr. Reed. But I'm aware such behavior would not be tolerated in other hospitals. Huh. Your son wished to die, Beatrice. Why did you hide such crucial information? Are you not aware suicide is a crime? Mortimer could what? be thrown in jail. Wow. I can't let that happen. I won't. I understand you fear the legal consequences. Dang. Beatrice, is, uh, Beatrice hit her son's suicide attempt to keep him out of jail. Oh. Wow. I don't know. This is but don't you realize your silence significantly affects your son's case? All my son needs is help and comprehension. Not judgment and punishment for what he may or may not have done. Mm. Goodbye, Mrs. Goswick. All right. Good evening, Mr. Goswick. How are you? I'm okay. okay. How painful is your throat, Mr. Goswick? So painful I'd rather not talk at all, Doctor. I'm sure you realize a doctor and his patient have to communicate, sir. Would it help if I gave you some paper and a pen? Not really. I see. Then maybe it's not just your throat that hurts, Mr. Goswick. Perhaps your sore throat is just the consequence of something more hurtful. Yes, maybe. But I don't want to talk or even write about it now. Why did your mother have you hospitalized here? She seems convinced this is a bad hospital. My mother just wants the best for me. She won't rest while I'm here. She'd go all the way to hell and back to help me. Is your mother bothering you? As your doctor, I can ask her to leave you alone if you would prefer. That's tempting, doctor. But you have no idea what my mother is capable of. She would tie herself to my bed if you asked her to leave. Hmm. Pembroke Hospital may look unorthodox, but rest assured, you're in good hands here. It's not me you have to convince, Dr. Reed. It's my mother. Hmm. How painful is your throat, Mr. Goswick? So painful I'd rather not talk at all, Doctor. Hmm. Tell me about yourself, Mr. Goswick. I don't want to talk, Doctor. Admit it, Mortimer. Your mother had you hospitalized here because you tried to kill yourself. Yes, it's true. All right, then. This is the first time we've really shared information about your case. Shall we call this progress? Call it what you want, Dr. Reed. You can trust me. I won't report you to the authorities. My one and only concern is your health. I guess I should thank you, then. Can I help you in any way, Mr. Goswick? I wrote a letter for my mother. She was supposed to read it after... After my death. But I suppose she doesn't have to read it now. I I'm going to read it. <laughs> and is this letter still near the place where you tried to take your own life? Yes. And I don't want anyone reading my last words. I mean, I'm still here. If you bring me back that letter, then perhaps we'll talk. Mm. Can I read it first? Uh, if I don't read it, it does not. I have to go now, sir. 
But don't hesitate to contact me if you need any help. Good evening, sir. Doctor. Interesting, interesting. Oh gosh, what should I do? What should I do first? Pharmacy, backyard, hey, missing three, I'm missing a lot on this one. to talk to? Uh, I already forgot. Uh, who's the woman who gave her? Um. <sighs> um. What's the nurse? What's it? It's not you. Is it you? Oh, Miss Hawkins. I need to speak with you. Some saw she was outside. Good evening, Nurse Hawkins. Good evening, Dr. Reed. How would you describe the situation at the Pembroke Hospital? It's serious. The flu is wreaking havoc amongst the staff and patients. We are running out of everything. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, what? Oh, do I have to do it? If I have to do it, then I'll do it, but I don't want to do it. Let's see. I really want that to you. Uh, there's, there's somebody else here, right? Yeah, right. It's locked. It's locked. How do I get in? Heck, what do I have to do? Is there another window thing here? Maybe. Thelma Howcroft said she was being watched by vampire hunters. Where are they hiding? This is needed. Yeah, yeah, I should yeah, investigate. Yeah. I just came out here to look for the duck. I managed to arrange to have you buried in the same mass grave as your wife. Uh. I hope that might help. Sydney needs you. Every life saved by official medical aid is blow struck at the heart of the flu epidemic. Volunteers make that difference. Choir as the nearest appointments office at the Ministry of Labor and National Service to write 215 Cubans, London. It's locked. And I guess I need to be in there. Long letter. 
Birmingham, 27 September. Hello, sis. How are things in the big city? Here in Brum, things are not so good. It seems the flu is here again. We have many new cases of infection in the neighborhood. Do you remember Miss Scheller, the old drinking hag on the third floor? She passed away two days ago and her flat is already occupied again. Jeez, you would have to pay me a huge amount of money to go to sleep and not keep in the bed in which a woman died of the flu just a few hours ago. So I did not take time to quickly answer your last letter. Between taking care of little Paul, mom, dad, and my job at the factory, I rarely find time to write to my favorite sister. By the way, my son says hello to his Auntie Pippa. You should see the little bugger. Already driving me mad. And mom says you bring back some of those marvelous cakes the next time you come back home. In your last letter, you told me you thought about quitting your job at the Pembroke Hospital. I had to tell you, Pip. You better think twice. There are always jobs at the factory, but wages are shit. And it's as boring as a day without a shack. Oh, I have a new fiance. No, I'm no slut, you moral bitch. You. <laughs> so if you really want to quit and do something useful, more, do something more useful than counting the dead every morning, maybe you better stay in London and join the band. You told me about the guard or Priven, something like that. Never heard of them. If they are, like you said, some sort of civil militia trying to make a difference, then maybe it's a good choice for you. Just be sure to let the others go in front. That's how my poor Billy got killed in France. But I didn't tell me pa patrols, bloody war. Anyway, come back as soon as you can and give me all the good news before that. I'm your f your affectionate sister, Lucy, Paul, Mom, and Dad. Hmm. I was thinking about quitting the Pembroke Hospital. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. It's locked. It's locked. You don't mind if I search your pockets, do you, sir? Ah, <sighs> great. You don't need any of these anyway. I'm not stealing from you, mister. I'm only redistributing your belongings to people who need them more than you. Okay, asshole. You see, no one has claimed your body, sir. So it would be such a shame to bury you with your valuables. Okay, I'm gonna kill you for sure. I will not forget you, sir. And I thank you for your generous donation. Oh, you're dead. You are so dead. Or I guess she deals with the dead. He is responsible for. You are so dead. <laughs> Tomorrow, more bodies will arrive and then sadly depart. Good evening. I'm Dr. Reed. Always a pleasure to meet a colleague, sir. Especially when he was supposedly dead. A colleague. Are you a doctor, too? Not anymore, sir. I used to be Dr. Rakesh Chadana. Now, I'm just Mr. Chadana. Pawnbroker and humble guardian of this morgue. What do you mean? You used to be a doctor. Was your license revoked? No, sir. It is just that I like to be precise. I run a little pawn shop while taking care of the dead. But I used to be a real doctor. Oh, wait, what? Are you afraid or uneasy being surrounded by so many corpses? Why should I? These bodies are empty vessels. Flesh left to decay. Mm. Poof. No soul anymore. All gone. How did you get this job? After I left the army, I worked as an undertaker down by the docks. A dangerous place with many an unpleasant business there. Milton Hooks helped me get a job here. An interesting point of view. And quite an exotic one, too. Most people fear or at least have a respect for dead flesh. Sir, as a medic during the war, I learned to face my death and the death of others. It's the pain we have to tame, not death itself. 
Bracken is not afraid of dust since he served as a medic. Do you work here alone? Yes, very easy work, sir. All I have to do is watch a few bodies. The situation was very different when the main morgue was still open. Why do you have to watch these bodies? Because these poor fellows have no names. We keep them in case someone comes looking for the missing. Sadly, very rarely happens. Why close the hospital's main morgue? It was for sanitary reasons after the beginning of the epidemic. Cadavers had to be moved to the nearest mass grave. Have we met before? I don't think so, sir. Why? When we first talked, you said you were glad to meet me since I was reported dead. Funny story, sir. Your sister came here a few nights ago. You were missing, and she was looking for your body. She must be very relieved now. Uh... A pawnbroker. I expect you get all types of people here. Yes, sir. All kind of people. For I sell all kind of goods. Who comes here to trade with you? It's very unhygienic, even unsafe. Diseases can spread. For the customers, for the hospital. I'm very cautious, sir. I've been a doctor, remember? And all my clients are good people. In fact, I think I only know good people. Mm. What kind of goods? With the quarantine, it's not always easy to buy things. So I trade, I exchange. Some people sell, some others buy. I like to help. Since you're not afraid of dying, do you believe in life after death, Rakesh? No. I believe we must do all the good we can while alive. For our time is short mm. and the obstacles are endless. Do you think you would enjoy immortality as a concept? I don't think so. Don't mistake me. I love life and I'd like to live a long life. But everything has to decay, sir. <laughs> Even goodwill. So you're ready to die? No, I am not. I don't fear death, for I won't see it. What troubles me is the pain my death will inflict to those I know. You're a wise man, Mr. Chidana. No, Dr. Reed. I am a foolish man. But I like to think otherwise. Do you really believe goodwill cannot last? As I said, sir, everything decays. If I was to never die, Goodness, I would be bored or worse. And I like to be helpful, sir. Quite depressing, wouldn't you say? Yes, but the good news is we'll all die before losing our humanity, sir. How dare you steal from the dead, Rakesh? Is that what your pawnbrokers is really about? These people are dead, sir. What they possessed could be useful for the living. And I'm sure they would agree if they could speak. <laughs> Dang, I don't, I don't. You should show respect for the dead. What about their loved ones who may treasure these items you sell? The bodies I watch over are the unwanted and undesired, sir. I would never deprive anyone of their family artifacts. A pawnbroker? I expect you get all types of people here. Yes, sir. All kind of people. For I sell all kind of goods. Please show me what you have to sell. Of course. It's just trinkets and curios, really. But I'm sure they can be useful.
Poi. <ride> mm. Partners kill them, partners don't. I don't know. Alright, I think I want to missing two people left. Let's see. Oh man, so many people at this guy in hospital. So much stuff for a mission I can go to right now if I wanted to. So, which one do I want to go to really? I don't know. Alright, uh, if anything, I'll probably just go upstairs now. Before we get to her. It's locked, all right. How do I open them? This must be the place. It's definitely away from prying eyes. Oops, I didn't actually remember. Relegated to the shadows. A kingdom of my own. At least I won't be sleeping in a coffin. Ha. Alright. Well, that's not where I'm at to go. I'm, at, I'm trying to get to this woman, but how do I get... What do I have to do for her? What's this? The uh, hacksaw. It's a lot of damage. For <laughs> one more, one more than this. The problem is, I use this too much stamina. Medical file Patient Thomas Elwood, male, age 28, followed by Dr. Tippett, status. Convalescence date of admissions number 16, date of release to be determined. Now, the patient's face has been heavily blunt and disfigured by a bomb during the war. With the use of the strongest sedatives, he affirms directly endure severe pain from the wounds, as if the flames are still burning under the skin, he says. Examinations of the cicatrice tissues show no trace of inflammation, in infection, or swelling. Scars are clean. Could it be a case of persisting nerve damage? The patient never ceases to blame himself for his disfiguration. Could it be a case of guilt of the survivor? Phantom pain manifesting his punishment for not dying with his comrades? Let me see. Uh, Thomas feels responsible for the disfiguration during the war. Uh. Okay. 
Dr. Swansea's message to Dr. Jonathan. I asked the nurse Crane to secure an office for you on the second floor. Please give that as your decoration, but Pembroke Hospital is not exactly the Ritz. Sorry to let you discover your office alone, but I need to sleep a little before going back to work. We're still here more after all. Also, I gave orders to let you rest and for the staff to never enter your room. You'll be able to sleep all day without being disturbed and work at night without raising any suspicion. Afraid the place is quite messy, but you'll be able to conduct your experiments here at your own pace. You also notice there is an open window with a scaffolding that will allow you to enter or exit the hospital without being noticed. Imagine how awfully new and disturbing this all must be for you. Believe me, I have studied enough of your species to understand what you must know by facing and feeling. Be assured I'll do whatever I can to help you in the ordeal. Know that you're not completely alone facing it. I'm glad I met you these dark times. We are all presently facing. I hope you, our future collaboration will yield great results. Welcome to Pembroke, my esteemed colleague. We shall talk soon. You're sincerely at Griffiths from CPS. I'd like to copy some of my notes concerning what I have discovered about Econ in the last few years. Feel free to read about it if you need some guidance, as long as you don't use this knowledge to take advantage of me. Sure thing, sure thing. Oh, it's a quest one? Okay. There's gonna be a long Articles on Econs. It is a rare opportunity and almost a privilege to approach a vampire to preserve their most intriguing physical and psychological traits with a scientific and rational eye. Here are some of the most fascinating abilities. I personally observed over the last 10 years while interviewing a few vampires, or econ as they prefer to call themselves, supernatural speed a vampire can act on move like a mortal in all his actions, but the trained eye will spot that they have the keenest and senses and can react quicker than any mortal. On a few occasions, alarm, surprise, and necessary to flee, I have seen a vampire move so quickly it is almost as if he had vanished just to reappear somewhere else. The human eye cannot follow their movements when they act so quickly, but it is not a teleport or dematerialization. It's only a supernatural speed. For me, it is a cat-like attribute which allows them to run, dodge, or jump longer and faster than us. I also notice that such speed seems to exhaust them and that they are bound to physical limitations. Mesmerism. One of the most powerful abilities a vampire can deploy is the capacity to force a mortal to obey them. I call this trait mesmerism, but it has nothing to do with the mortal ability to add, alter a subject's mental state. A vampire can bend a mortal to their will. They can even break a mind. A vampire I interviewed even told me the more a subject tries to resist, the more permanent the damage will be as if the vampire could literally fracture their tiger's psyche. The same vampire explained to me that this ability required time to master, that the result could vary widely from one subject to another, plant a false memory, erase a painful one, the possibilities are endless and frightening. But awareness. This may be the most catastrophic ability of all concerning vampires since it is the cause of so many tragedies for them and us. Vampires crave for blood. They must use their will to restrain themselves from frenziedly drinking every drop of blood they can see. They need blood to function and to express their full supernatural traits. A famished vampire can be very weak, even if he cannot die of hunger or thirst. This urge, this need for blood, may explain why a vampire is so aroused by it. A vampire confessed to me that blood could sometimes blind him, since it smells and, attract and attractiveness can be so strong. When he focuses, a vampire can almost see blood all around them, inside warm bodies, through walls, and a supposedly clean weapon, etc. The same vampire even told me that he can see if a mortal has clean blood or is ill. And that, in some cases, he can even sense diseases, infected clothes, or even other items in a room. This is true. It could have so many medical applications, it almost beggars belief. Uh. The flower's dying. It needs water. Do I got water? Water. Water? 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 Where is the water? Is water dug up? Do I need a vial? Sleeping. <sighs> ah, okay. That's what it does. Right, I'll save in a little bit. Uh, water, water, where's the water? Do I get the water? The flower's dying. 
It needs water. Where's the water? Okay, I'll do the thing right now. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Crafting, you first need to analyze the components you found to unlock new recipes. Click on the two analyze components. Oh. Blood sample of William Butcher. Fresh sample of William Butcher's blood in a small tube. Analyze the view blueprints. <laughs> Serums. Live generation of regenerates 300 health points instantly, then 150 health points over 15 seconds. I need those things. Okay, this is where I will recycle. <sighs> Missing sodium hypochlorite solution. And a hmm. What is that? Oh, it's salt water. Salt. No, it's not salt water, is it? I think, I feel like it is. <laughs> William Bishop's blood is much more unstable than human blood and shows extensive mutation. But this is not what happened to me. I must keep on searching. The sun is about to rise. I can feel it. I'll continue tomorrow night. I have so much time now. But very vampire is afraid of suffering damage. Are familiar with the hardness ability. This blood ability will protect the vampire from dark damage. For it does not stop them from being grabbed by enemies. You can hurt a body, but only if you can catch me. So you know, anyway, you unlock the tactics. That's interesting. They're spent. Dang. 